there if we have anyone out there. Um, we welcome you to the first St. Paul's Reformed Church live stream on Sunday morning that I'm aware of. Obviously, with social distancing recommendations, we're not having in-person services right now until further notice. Hope we can get back together soon uh, to fellowship and meet with each other, because I miss seeing uh, all of you. I apologize in advance for any technological issues on audio, video, or if the rubber band breaks and the phone falls down. As uh, Jesse put a uh, post out not too long ago showing what we're dealing with, we got a rubber band, a uh, phone, and a tripod. But if it does shut up or shut off, we have another phone and backup. So just hang here a minute or two. Um, some of you've been wondering, perhaps, about uh, tithes and offerings. If you are interested and want to. Still give those. You can send those to our treasurer, Mike Hersberger's residence, uh, since we're not here at the church as much. Uh, or you can just save them until we get back together, whatever you want to do. And he said I can give out his mailing address. It's 229 Spring Hope Road, Shellsburg. 229 Spring Hope Road, Shellsburg. So let's get right into the Word. If you have your Bibles with you, um, and you're willing, if you could... Pull them out and open them to Philippians 4. Philippians 4, we're going to be looking at 1 through 7 today. If you don't have them, you can just listen. But um, our emphasis today is going to be on verses 6 through 7, but I want to do Philippians 4, 1 through 7 to get kind of the whole idea here of uh, what brought this passage to bear. Usually I can tell when people are about there by the pages start quieting up, but I can't hear a whole lot, so I'll just give you a minute or two. It's kind of weird preaching to a phone here, so bear with me. <clears throat> I mean, a sophisticated camera system that we have. Um, Philippians 4, 1 through 7. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Euodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask also, true companion, help these women who've labored side by side with me in the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I, in these anxious times that we're going through in the world today, Lord, we, we have our hope in you. And I pray, Father, that you would just help us to concentrate on you, to not be anxious, but come to you for help. And Lord, give us peace, as you promised to do. We thank you for your son's sacrifice on our behalf, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So there seems to be a lot of chaos today in the world with this coronavirus. People getting sick, government shutting down operations, shutting down businesses, people losing jobs, being laid off, economic turmoil. In today's day, if you had a choice between a brick of gold or a roll of toilet paper, you'd probably pick the toilet paper every time. People are stockpiling supplies. They're buying up seats from seat companies in case the food runs out. People are worried, scared, stressed, and anxious. A new poll I just saw shows that 40% of Americans are anxious about getting the virus and either becoming seriously ill or dying. 40%. 62% of Americans are anxious about a loved one getting this virus. And then 57% of Americans are concerned that the coronavirus will negatively and seriously impact their finances. So the conclusion from this is, right now, people are anxious. But how should we react? How should we respond to these situations in our world as Christians? Does God tell us anything on how to prevent and deal with worry, stress, and anxiety? Is there any hope for us? 
In today's passage, we're going to see that God, through the Apostle Paul, gives Christians great hope in times of anxiety. We're going to see that God does not want us to be anxious about anything. Instead, we're to pray to Him, and when we do, He'll give us peace. Do not be anxious. Pray to God, and He will give us peace. So let's start with do not be anxious. <clears throat> Look at me in verse 6, please. It says, do not be anxious about anything. Paul tells the church of Philippi, he doesn't want them to be anxious about anything, to worry about anything, to let anything stress them out. But kind of what is anxiety anyway? So I looked it up, and one dictionary says it's a state of mind where one's concerned about something or someone. It also, another one says, it's an uneasy feeling of uncertainty, agitation, dread, or fear. Boy, we can see that nowadays, can't we? And Paul didn't want the church of Philippi to be anxious. But why does Paul say this? What brought this up for Paul to write this in the Scripture? Well, something we have to keep in mind here is that Paul wrote this letter from a prison in Rome. Confined to a prison cell, not knowing what would happen the next day to him, he had to have at times been tempted to be anxious. It had to have crossed his mind sometimes to possibly worry. But not only that, he says that, that the church of Philippi is uh, struggling with disunity, as we see in verse 2. That these two women, uh, Euodia and Syntyche, were not getting along. They were fighting. And Paul loved this church, and he wanted nothing more for them to grow in their service and love for God, their service and love for others. But this unity and division and fighting with each other and anxiety, it gets in the way of all that. And these women who were fighting, they must have been anxious. This church that he was writing to must have been anxious, and Paul wanted to help them. And by the grace of God, Paul knew how to prevent and to fight anxiety. And he wanted them to know and we can be helped by this today as well. But what's wrong with anxiety anyways? <clears throat> I mean, deep down, we all know we don't want to be anxious. It's not desirable for anyone to be anxious. We shouldn't be anxious. We know that. I mean, you've probably heard the statistics showing that uh, somebody who has a stressed out life, that's really anxious most of their life, they have a decreased uh, length of life compared to somebody who isn't as stressed. Or maybe you've heard of statistics showing that people that are really stressed out grow and increase in their possibility of health complications, heart disease, um, diabetes, depression, much more. And all that's good to know. It's important to know. But there's a bigger problem with being anxious. A much bigger problem. The real problem with being anxious is we're not trusting God. We aren't trusted in His sovereignty. When we start worrying, we say, say, God, I know you say you're in control, but I don't believe you. We say that with our actions. And being anxious also isn't trusting God's promises. One such promise, one of my favorites, is in Romans 8, 28. He says that everything will work for the ultimate good of the Christian. Not that everything's going to be warm and fuzzy, but that even through the worst of circumstances, He's working it for our good. But when we get anxious, when we worry, we're saying, God, I don't believe you. I don't trust you. I don't trust what you tell me. And brothers and sisters, that is good. It's sinful. There are many scriptures that talk about the need, the benefit, the obligation for us to trust God. When you think about it, the only one that we can completely trust all the time, that will never let us down, will always be there for us, is God. People fail us, but God cannot fail us. It's an impossibility for Him to fail us, because of His good character. But even though that is true, we still struggle with being anxious, don't we? I mean, do you get anxious? Do you ever worry? You ever get stressed out? I do. Stressed out getting the set up today. I mean, do you ever get stressed out 
getting in arguments with people like Yoda and Sinti, or sometimes the reason that we do fight with people is because of our anxiety causes rifts in relationships. But we don't just get anxious in disagreements with people. We get anxious all kinds of things, all times of life, don't we? I mean, what about the things in the world right now that we're going through? People are afraid of catching this thing. Uh, the government shutting down businesses and, and jobs. Uh, I mean, I just read about a seat company had to shut down their operations on their website because they got this influx of orders and they had to shut it down just so they could catch up. They couldn't take it anymore. People are freaking out right now. They're stockpiling. They're worried. These are trying times. These are worrisome times. These are stressful times. And these are anxious times. So whether you're in prison like Paul or you're free, whether you have disagreements with somebody or you don't, you're probably struggling at some point with anxiety. So what does Paul tell the church of Philippi to do and us to do instead of being anxious? I mean, it's one thing simply to say, don't be anxious. It's another thing to give somebody the solution to not be anxious. And thankfully, Paul gives us the remedy, the treatment, the cure for preventing and fighting anxiety. And what is it? It's prayer. Prayer. Look with me again in verse 6. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. What's the remedy? Prayer. Paul's emphasis is that prayer is really, really important when dealing with anxiety. It's absolutely critical. And there are two things we need to know about prayer when dealing with anxiety. One is that we're to thank God in prayer. The other is that we're to make requests to God in prayer. To thank God in prayer and to make requests to Him in prayer. So let's look at those. We'll start with thank God in prayer. Again, in verse 6, towards the middle, it says, With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, normally, when most of us think about prayer, we think about asking things for God or from God. So it's interesting here that Paul says when, about being anxious, he mentions thanksgiving. Why does he do this? Well, one, one reason might be because when you're anxious, you're worried, you're stressed out, you don't often have a heart of thankfulness. They normally don't go hand in hand. It's almost the opposite. When we're anxious, we're so consumed with ourselves, our problems, our wants, focusing on these issues that are making us anxious. And when we pray to God and give Him thanks for all that we do have, it sets the tone in a whole different direction. Away from what we don't have or the problems we do have, away from the negatives, and it sends our mind on the positives, all that we have from God and in God. And that can zap anxiety out of us really quickly. <clears throat> More importantly, thanking God, it glorifies God. When we're anxious, we're not giving Him glory because we're not trusting Him. On the other hand, when we thank Him, we're giving Him praise and we're giving Him glory for all that He's provided to us. So picture this. It might be you. Someone's stuck in their house with this, these governmental recommendations. You're self-quarantined. Maybe your job isn't considered essential and, and they've closed down. You're watching the news. You're watching Facebook updates. And you're, you're just hearing all this thing about the virus is spreading and it's really scary and it's, don't take it lightly. And the more news you watch, and the more freaked out you get. And then you start thinking, when do I get back to work? What if the money dries up? And you get more anxious. But instead of freaking out, you say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to thank God. You start thinking, wow, God. With all this uncertainty in the world right now, I have a roof over my head. As the rain comes down, I'm warm and dry. You think, wow, God, I have a family who cares about me and friends who care about me. Thank you for that. You think, wow, a lot of people get sick and you You've protected me. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy on me. Or you think, well, if I do get sick and get really bad, that the worst that can happen is I come home with you forever in heaven, in utter bliss, to live as Christ and die as gain. 
Thank you for your mercy on me. Thank you for what you've done on the cross through your son Jesus for me. Thank you. And a thankful heart, it changes the tone right away, doesn't it? It settles your heart down a little bit. It puts you back in a proper perspective, in the mode of trusting and glorifying God. I mean, think about all that you have. It could be many things. It could be material possessions, your house, your car, you name it. It could be your family or friends, like I just said. It could, it could and it should be what you have in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul, at the end of verse 7, he says these things he's talking about here are in Christ Jesus. Paul's main emphasis isn't on our material possessions, although we should be thankful to God for them and give Him praise. The emphasis here isn't on our family and friends, although we should thank God for them and give Him praise for that. The emphasis here is on Christ Jesus, all that we have in Him. We should be thankful that our sins were paid for on the cross 2,000 years ago by our Savior, Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, he says. That we have heaven to come when we die, and we're in a relationship with him here and now. We have so much to be thankful for in Christ Jesus. Material possessions can be taken away from us. Family and friends, we can lose them. But we'll never lose Christ Jesus. He's the rock who stands firm through everything. And that's what it's all about. But Paul also goes on, he says, we're to make requests to God. We're to ask God for things. We're to ask Him for things to help in anxious times. When we're getting stressed and when we're getting worried. Look with me again, and this is at the end of verse 6. He said, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What's stressing you out? Go to God with it. Ask Him for help. Make requests to Him in your time of need. He's standing at the ready, waiting for you. I mean, listen to how Peter talks about going to God with our anxieties in 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. He says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time He may exalt you. And here's the key casting all your anxieties on Him. Because he cares for you. He's not just wanting you to go to prayer to him as some kind of procedural thing. God cares for you. God tells us to cast our anxieties on him because he cares for us. That situation you're going through right now that you're worried and anxious about, he cares about it and he cares for you. You worried about this virus? He cares about this and he cares for you. Job situations and government shutdowns, he cares about this and he cares for you. Or maybe you're in a work for a food producer and they're shutting you down, they're putting you in overdrive trying to get these shelves stocked. You're working long hours on top of trying to take care of the family and you're getting anxious, you just don't know how you can handle all this. Some days you feel like you're going to fall over, you're exhausted. He sees it, he cares about it, and he cares for you. Or I know some of you work on, in the healthcare industry. You're on the front lines of this battle. You don't know when you wake up to go to work if today's the day you're going to get sick, if it's tomorrow, or if you're going to take it home to those you love. Or maybe you just want to get back to normal life. Kids out of school, you just want to get back to school. Get back to visiting and people you love and miss. He cares about all this and he cares for you. So go to him with these worries. Thank him for what you have and ask him for help, trusting that he will provide it because he cares for you. But sometimes even knowing this, we still struggle with believing it, don't we? Our situations seem so tough, so hard sometimes, we just can't see past them. But good news, if you're wondering if there's help for you, there is help. God promises to help you with your anxieties. He may not fix the problem exactly the way you want it or at all. He may not fix it in the time frame you want. But you know what he will do if you trust him? You know what he will do if you give him thanks and you make requests to him? He promises he will give you peace in difficult and anxious times. I get this from verse 7. It says, 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Peace. Who doesn't want that? God will give us peace. The word peace in the New Testament is used 91 times. God talks much about peace. And he wants us to have peace. I looked up the word peace and it has several different elements to it. You have peace meaning the absence of war, like you hear in peace times. You have kind of linked with that the harmonious relations and freedom from disputes. And then you have freedom from disturbance, disturbances. We might say freedom from disturbances in our minds and our hearts. Do we have peace when we're anxious? Are we free of disturbances in our minds and hearts when we're anxious? No. That's the opposite. But Paul says, God will give us peace. Now, you notice here, Paul does not say, God's just going to fix your situation. That's where your peace is going to come from. He doesn't say that. Paul, in this context, tells us that God will give us peace that surpasses all understanding and guards our hearts and minds. This peace is a peace in the midst of the struggles, in the midst of the bad circumstances. A peace that the average non-Christian can't understand. You're going through a terrible situation. They look over at you and go, he has peace? She has peace? What gives? We can have the mid we can have peace in the midst of a food shortage. We can have peace in the midst of having a virus. We can have peace in the midst of the worst times of our lives. Why? Because it's in Christ Jesus. To not be anxious, but instead have peace, knowing him, that he's in control. That he's made peace with us, with God, through his life, death, and resurrection for us. That our sins are forgiven completely. These truths do not change, no matter what our circumstances are. Even though our circumstances, they might change. I mean, think about it. What can really happen to us as Christians? Our sins are paid for. They're gone. We're no longer enemies of God, but we are His sons and daughters who have been adopted into His family, and He cares for us. And if you wonder, does God care for me? Look at the cross. Look 2,000 years ago, Him hanging on that cross, that bloody cross, bearing the wrath of God we deserve so we would never have to bear it. An eternity in conscious Eternal torment and hell, gone, completely paid for by our Savior. For those who put their faith and trust in Him and what He did. He cares that much for you, brothers and sisters. Trust in God. Go to Him. Thank Him. Make requests to Him. And He will give us peace in difficult times. But maybe you're watching this and you think or say, I'm not a Christian. If that's you, the Bible says that you aren't at peace with God. It actually says that you're an enemy of God. But the good news is that Jesus has paved the way for you to have peace with God. Jesus lived a sinless, perfect life, obeying God the Father in every way, where we failed God in every way and sinned against Him. Then He went to that cross to pay for our sins, bearing the wrath of God, so you would never have to. Jesus purchased our peace with God, and it's a gift to all those who put their faith and trust in what he did. It's not for everyone regardless of what you believe, though. The gift of forgiveness is only for those who repent, who turn to God, and believe the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He's the only way. You can go from war with God from on your way to hell forever to peace with God and on your way to heaven forever. You can go from cut off from God in this life, no relationship with Him, to a relationship with Him here and now where He can give you peace through difficult times. So please believe the good news. So we've seen today that God does not want us to be anxious about anything. Nothing at all. That He wants us to go to Him in prayer, give Him thanks, and make requests to Him. And he will give us peace then. These are trying times, brothers and sisters. These are anxious times for a lot of people, even us Christians. But they don't have to be. 
If you're struggling with anxiety, don't. Go to your king, and he will give you peace. A peace that is in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for the peace you give us in Christ. We thank you for making peace with us through your Son. Lord, I pray for all those out here hearing this and that will hear this. I pray you would draw them to yourself and give them peace. For these difficult times, but not only that, when this thing passes, for the rest of our lives, because we go through it all the time, as you know, Lord. We go through anxieties. Please help us fight this with peace from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So people of God, please receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord give peace to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you. Give you peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the Prince of Peace. May you be blessed and I thank you for tuning in. And We can't wait to get back uh, with you here at church and be able to fellowship again. If you have any prayer uh, concerns, requests, um, you can either post them on our timeline on our Facebook page, or if there's something you don't want everyone to see, just uh, send us a message on Facebook, and we'll uh, try to pray for those throughout the week. And also, uh, we'll try to keep you guys updated on Facebook uh, when we'll be meeting again. We'll monitor this situation. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.